practically there. Okay, Big Tail, you're on your way. Let go of it, Pop. Okay, son. Here you go.
I've about run out of gas. Need a little money to pay my roughnecks. Thought I'd like to borrow 500 till I ring the bell. I'm afraid the bell isn't going to ring. Not in that well, anyway. Oh, Riley, I don't want to discourage you. I think you're throwing good money after bad. But I... Now, don't get me wrong, Dan. I'll give you 500 on your own face. But I won't give you the money to make any more hole in that well. It's absolutely NG. All you independent operators need protection against yourselves. Listen, Mr. Anderson. That's one of the finest pieces of property in the country. And if I don't bring a right in over the crown, I've drilled my last well. That's a good I think it is. Difference of opinion makes horse racing. I'd rather bet my 500 on a horse. My man, you've only got 30 days left, then your lease falls back on us. You've been at it for two years now, and you haven't struck anything yet. But well, that doesn't mean I... I hate to see a friend of mine go wrong. Now, it isn't a question of the 500, Dan. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a 1,000, so long as you don't throw it away on that empty hole. And, providing you vacate the premises as of tomorrow. Anderson, I've wrung a lot of oil out of the earth for other people. But this one is for me. Not so much for me as for my son. I've got 30 days. And I'm going to keep on digging, even if I have to do it with my teeth. For your teeth, I hope they stand up under it. You're putting out your Christmas presents kind of early, aren't you, J.C.? What do you mean? Well, you practically laid the guy down, tried to force the grand in his kick. Got to stop O'Reilly from drilling another inch. Oh, why worry about him? Let him drill till he hits China if he wants to. When did I start worrying about anyone else? All right, have I got to draw a picture for you, you big lummox? I sold the man the lease two years ago because I thought it was a trick. Now my geologist tells me... But the so-called boob is liable to hit the richest well in the history of the field. Any day now. No fool. And the contract calls for an additional ten years lease if he strikes oil. Now, can you get that through the thing you use for a head? Oh. If he can't drill, he can't strike oil. Can he? The discovery of the Neanderthalian man marked the last link in the relationship between the ape and the man. Now then, children, so great was their development over the ape that they were able, by the first display of reasoning power, to fashion tools and implements with which they wrested a livelihood from the soil. So you see, it really marked the first stages in the progress of man's thought. Soon after that, there was a further development of man. It came about by the manner in which they solved the housing problem. They began to find caves to live in, instead of sleeping in the open, a very definite departure from the habits of animals. There was yet to come a most important break in the relationship of the Neanderthalian man to the animal world. They began to stand upright like the present-day man. Cut it! man your size. Well, I was only trying to help. Yes, I know. You were trying to kill him, you big. Clifford, are you sure no bones are broken? No, I'm all right. Big sissy like him can't hurt me. Never mind, helpful Harry. You've done enough. Not Harry. Henry. Henry Langford. 
Well, uh, now that you've gone this far, you can drive us back to the school. With pleasure. Thousands of dollars. Me working like a slave for two years, investing all that money, and he offers me a thousand dollars. I'd like to have laughed in the face. I wouldn't trust that guy any further than I could throw an elephant by the tail. When Mr. Anderson starts giving you something, you better look out. You got something he wants. If we can just hold on for a couple of weeks, we'll be so darn rich we won't need to wash dishes. We'll just eat and chuck them out the window. The Murphys do that now. They got paper dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted it off. Turn the motor on full speed and snap it. That means pull up tight. Fishing job. I don't know what we're going to use for money. But but who did it? And, and why? Did you get a look at them, Joe? No, Mr. O'Reilly, I didn't. They're knocking me silly and I then when I come to, they're had their back to me. Better have Dr. Marsh look at that. Okay. Better take that thousand from Anderson and, and call it a day. Nothing personal about it, Tom. I hate to foreclose on a brand, but that's how business is. Why, hello, Dan. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you. <clears throat> come in, come in, come in. Does, uh, does that offer still go? Anytime you say the word. Well, now is as good a time as ever. Now you're talking sense. Um, tell Collins to make out a check for $1,000 to Dan O'Reilly. Uh, that's it. Uh, Dan O'Reilly, yes. Hey, Pop, if you ain't done it, don't do it. This is Mr. Lankford. He wants to talk to you. Aren't you going to wait for the check? No, we don't want your check. Come on, Pop. You know, I made the uh, geological survey on the big Dalton Gusher. I find the same line formation in your Cortez. You really think we have a chance to bring her in? Oh, definitely. I think if we use a slip hook, we'll be able to fish up that broken equipment okay. Well, Mr. O'Reilly, I haven't got much money, but uh, I'm willing to back up judgment with it. What are you, son? Shake, Clyde. It's a deal. Oh, no, you don't. You're going back to school where you belong. Oh, 
that tank. I want to help you here. Can I help? Uh, yes, you can. Will you do me a favor? Sure, anything. What do you want me to do? Promise? Sure, I promise. Come on over here. No, I've been thinking. The teacher tells me you're behind your study. And uh, I thought it'd be sort of a good idea to ask her to help you catch up in your back lesson. You know, in the evenings at her home. What? Go to school at night? Well, I don't see what good that'd do you. And it sure wouldn't do me any good. Oh, you want to back out on your promise, eh? No, I'm not backing out, but I thought you wanted me to help you with a rig. But, oh, go to school, God. That won't be tough. And I'll call for you in the car. Hey, you're not kind of falling for this, Miss Cynthia, are you? You struck on last time, pal. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Will you go to school? Hey, wait a minute. Okay, you win. All right. As an illustration, we'll do it again with the apples. Now, Jack has three apples, and his friend Henry has none. Apples are eight cents a pound, and Henry has two cents. Now, what happened to that third apple? I'm sure I saw it a moment ago. It now seems that Jack has two apples and Henry has one. Now you've gone and ruined my problem, you old apple snitcher. <laughs> well, if you're that hungry, I'll make you a cup of tea. Thanks, teacher. Thanks, pal. That problem had me dizzy. Don't mess it. How about a little music? Mm, well. Yeah, that's a good tune. Play that one. Why do green have wrinkles? Is it because they wear it though? My teacher ought to know. She knows everything. Does a pig get thirsty playing in the sea below? My teacher ought to know. She knows everything. She knows the alphabet from A to Z. And that school's work meant for me. Why do folks like walking when the moon is hanging low? My teacher ought to know. She knows everything. One more chorus, and the landlord will break my lease. <laughs> no, no, clear the things off the table. How many sugars, Clifford? Second, please. Well, you help yourself. Okay. Beautiful piece of work, Cynthia. Yes, it's over 80 years old. Did you make it yourself? <laughs> Just a little something I whipped up when I crossed this Columbus to the flat. I just fine. Tomorrow night we'll go over your history. Tomorrow night? Oh, heck. Why don't you let Hank come along? It was his idea in the first place. Just because he wants to see you, I've got to come over here and sit for hours and repeat. If Jack's got three apples and Henry has none, what do I care about Jack? And what do I care about Henry? I, I, I don't know where the boy got you an idea. Go on, tell her what you told me. Well, go ahead. Don't be a coward. If you don't shut your mouth, I'll wrap my ten fingers around your esophagus. He's nuts about you. That's what he's... Are he's nuts you? about you. Oh, fish. 
tale, she's beautiful, she's wonderful. Fish tail, she's gorgeous, she's divine. When a man whips her, he really whips something. I guess he thought you were a raffle. Hey, oh, let me oh, hey, oh, come on. Let me tell you. Hey, no. Yeah, I love you. Hey, I love you. I hope I do. Oh, 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 oh. I, let me help you, Mr. Chloe. That don't do me no good, no <laughs> Oh, this is school again, huh? I didn't, you starved to death. Then how? <laughs> ah, food. All right, boys, knock off for lunch. Well, dear, what have you got there? You'll see if you follow me. Lead on. <laughs> McDuff. Stop being nosy now. Oh, boy. Oh, chicken. If it ain't ever loving, standing up, sitting down, good old fried chicken. You know, I think this incompatibility is a, is a very important thing when two people are in love. What do you mean, incompatibility? Oh, I don't know, but, well, you know, when a husband and wife... And they both like dark meat, and there isn't enough to go around. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you can laugh if you want to. But I'm going to find out all those things before I marry a girl. Clifford, I wouldn't be too hard on a lady. The girl we're in love should adjust herself. Oh. <laughs> you take it, dear. Thanks. Adjusting yourself, huh? My meter showed that I pledged 800 pounds during last week, and Langford helped me check my meter. Oh, yeah? Well, Anderson pays off by his meter. And that read 425. There's something wrong with yours. Langford tested my oil, and you only pay me on the basis of a 34 gram. That means 15 cents less for the barrel. What do we care about, Langford? We make our own sense. We want this. Mr. Langford told me. Oh. All right, boys, shut it down. I understand you're an expert geologist. Thank you. You've been giving your services free to the independent operator. Why don't you get smart and make a little money out of it? I could use a good geologist. I'm afraid you can't pay me enough money. Good day, sir. <clears throat> Just a minute. Let me give you a little sound advice, young fellow. Knowledge improperly used is a dangerous weapon. You ever get cut with your own knife? Don't try any of your pretty speeches on me, Mr. Anderson. I see what you're driving at. I'm not afraid of you or your gorillas. Now, you just tend to your knitting and stop playing boogeyman with me.
down about 4,000 feet, and we're still cutting some pretty tough rocks. Well, what about Riley and Langford? They'll be in a second. A couple of beers with you, Charlie. Oh, I guess we can get going now. Harry, right. still pouring? Yeah. All right, Hank, I guess we're all here. Okay, let's get going. Oh. Quiet! Quiet, please! Settle down now! I guess you all know why we're meeting here, but for the better of those that don't, I just want to tell you that most of us are getting tired of being pushed around by Anderson and his thieving outfit. At least I am. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Lie. Wait a minute. You all know Hank Langford. Well, he's got something to say to you. Now settle down. All yours, Hank. Go ahead. Yeah. Wait a minute. Fellows, I haven't been here long. But I've been here long enough to know we've got to do something if we want to stay in the oil business. been exploited, blessed, imposed upon. Now it's time for action. I know one thing. No man could offer me 65 cents a barrel for oil when the market called for 80. What we need is organization. If we stick together, no one can toss us around. Not even Anderson. Either he pays us the regular price or we'll pool our production and sell to a company that will. What are you trying to sell us, Langford? Where do you get your cut? We're doing all lines of ears. We don't need advice from outsiders. Shut up, you guys. Let us talk. Now, wait a minute. If I thought you were speaking for the rest of these people, I might take your advice and mind my own business. But let me ask you a question. Do you operate a well? What's it to you? <laughs> Say, what's he doing here anyway? He works for Anderson. Pull him out. They got the right here. Come on, let's call him out. All right, go get him. I suggest we put it up to Anderson. Either he play ball with us or we sell to somebody else. Good night, Good night, Good night. See you in the morning. Got a match, buddy? Thanks. Kind of tough to be wanting a match and smoke. You haven't got one? Hey, you're Mr. Langford, aren't you? Yes, why? Oh, nothing. Gang, let's cram out of here. That ought to give me a hint to stay out of town. You mean to tell me this happened just giving a man a match? It wasn't what I gave him, it's what he gave me. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, don't stop. It didn't hurt, really. You know? I'm beginning to like those guys that slugged me. See, Mr. Anderson, we're putting it right up to you before we go any further. Well, boy, I didn't realize that my employees were practicing all sorts of abuses on people that I've been reared with. People that started with me in the oil business. I'm glad you've called this to my attention. And I assure you I'll do everything I can to put it right with you. I'm positively amazed. Stevens, you'll have to account to me for this. Well, now listen. Don't what? talk back to me. I'll see you later. And you can tell the rest of the boys for me that from now on, J.C. Anderson is back in his overalls where he belongs. Well, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. That's fine. Well, sorry, I'm, boys. Bad after all. I'm glad you came in. Come in any time. Sure, thank Doors you. wide open always, boys. Oh, Was that on the level? At my weight, I'm the best promiser in the country. You've got to be a little more careful from now on until I can get a couple of these troublemakers out of the way. Uh, you just tell me who's what. Oh, don't get excited. More important things to be done. Oh, you mean that O'Reilly guy, huh? Yes. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, hey, I'll go up with her this time. Okay. Hi, Bob. Hello, son. Too long. 
thing to say about anyone. Even Anderson, especially when you can't prove it. Prove what? Hank, what on earth are you talking about? Cynthia, I found traces of corrosive acid on that cable. I'm convinced that Dan O'Reilly was murdered. Why, Hank, that's incredible. If I could only prove it. But why would he want to kill Mr. O'Reilly? Why? Why are there men like Anderson? Oh, I'd like to pull him apart and see what makes him tick. You mustn't say things like that. If what you say is true, anything might happen. Hank, you must promise me that you'll be careful, please. Now, don't worry, Cynthia. Nothing's going to happen. But, Hank, I still can't understand. Why? Oil, Cynthia. Plenty of oil.
Well, there she is. Yep. I guess she'll be coming in any time now, huh? Oh. Hey, boss. They're down to oil fair now. That settles it. I can't wait any longer. I want you to bring young O'Reilly to me tonight alone. Yeah, but what about your dry language? I want you to tell Alex and the boys that there must be no slip up tonight. They must go through, you understand. Oh, well, good night, dear. See you tomorrow. Good night. all night. Nobody's seen him. Gosh, I'm worried. I'll go over and see Mr. Clemens. Uh, do that, will you, Miss Jackson? I have to get back to the well right away. All right, children. School's dismissed. Ready? Miss Clemens. Hank. 
Frank Lyons has disappeared. Meet me at the wooden ring, 7 o'clock. Yo, Emma. Meet me at the wooden ring, 7 o'clock. Hank's disappeared. Hello, oh, Tom. Well, see you at the wooden ring, 7 o'clock. Lyons has disappeared. And when Whittle Red Riding Hood came in the house, she said, Grandma, what great eyes you have. The better to see you, my child. And Grandma, what great treats you have. The better to eat you, my child. Can you imagine that dirty rat? Trying to trick that dirty on the kid? Well, that was my kid. I'd knock that guy off. So Whittle Red Riding Hood came closer and closer and sat on the bed. Hey, ain't you sleeping yet? I don't worry, boss. He's as safe with Homer as he would be if he had the whole National Guard with him. Fine, Rusty. Fine. Hello? Yes? Yes, speaking. Now listen, kid. You'll be a nice little boy. And 
I'm going to buy you a stick of peppermint. <laughs> You'll like that, would you?
Well, how do you like military school, Clifford? Oh, Hank, will you please call me Fishtail just once? <laughs>